and welcome back to episode number two of Wind Orchestra Masterworks, a conversation where we will dive into the Wind Orchestra's greatest stories and legends. I'm your host, Mike Corson, and joining me once again for our second episode is the music director and conductor of the Lone Star Wind Orchestra, Eugene Corporon. Eugene, thanks so much for being here again with us today. My pleasure. My pleasure. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If you are a returning listener, we hope you all enjoyed our first episode where we had a fantastic discussion about the Barcelona clarinet players. If you missed it and you'd like to tune in to that conversation, you can check it out on our YouTube channel by simply searching Lone Star Wind Orchestra. While you're there, please subscribe to us so you can be notified when future episodes are released. Today, Eugene and I thought it might be fun to segue into uh, introducing Lone Star's clarinet section. And what we're going to essentially do in the next few months is we're going to be introducing uh, all the sections of the Lone Star Wind Orchestra. And today, we're going to start with the clarinets. Uh, But before we do that, Eugene, being a clarinet player yourself, can you tell us a little bit about the clarinet's role in the wind orchestra? They're usually found to be the largest section uh, in most wind bands, but what do you think that they contribute to the ensemble as far as color, technique, blend, whatever? Sure, be happy to. But the clarinet became kind of the common man's instrument, representative of the new age. And uh, that's when we really began to have multiple parts and multiple players on a part. And we began to get these huge uh, clarinet sections and huge bands as well. But the clarinet section really does take on a lot of the melodic responsibility that a string section would, that violins in particular would. And um, even to this day, the Garde Republican Band of France Uh, when they play orchestral transcriptions, they just hand the violin parts out to the clarinet players. Oh, wow. They, I mean, and say, here you go, transpose them, we're going. Uh, And uh, they play actual string parts in the right register. Uh, And it's pretty amazing. Well, to talk a bit uh, more in depth about the clarinet section, we're going to go ahead and bring in today's guest. He's currently one of the section managers for Lone Star's clarinet section. Mr. Bobby Lipinski. Bobby, how are you today? Good. How are you? Doing great. So, I mean, safe to say, Bobby, that you are a (laughs) full-time musician. (laughs) One might say like overtime, like like quite a bit of overtime. Yes. More than 40 hours a week doing music. Um, Yeah. Are all of the clarinetists in Lone Star as involved in music outside of the ensemble as you are? Uh, I believe every single one of us does have a music degree and many having advanced degrees, whether graduate master's degrees, artist diplomas, and uh, doctoral degrees as well from many different universities. Uh, and even uh, having some uh, members, I know Kristen Boulay has a relationship with Selmer as well. So for being one of the largest sections, we're definitely well connected uh, in the music scene, uh, whether from you know where we all came from initially, other programs we've attended, other players we've interacted and worked with. So it's definitely a well-balanced section mm-hmm. uh, for sure. I want to take it back over to Eugene for just a minute and ask about Lone Star's history in featuring the clarinets, whether that's pieces that feature the section soloists or ensembles. As a clarinetist yourself, Eugene, you must love opportunities like this uh, to feature the section that you know most. Yeah, yeah, I, and I would really echo what Bobby was talking about. We have a superior group of players there. I mean, really wonderful musicians on every part. And um, that's, what makes, that's what makes a really great ensemble. I, I'm fond of saying it's not everybody knows the first player can play. It's can, can you have a section of players who bring their artistry to their part and um, and give a full uh, full color sound. I have a poster uh, in my office that's a uh, first page of the Beethoven Symphony, hmm. and it, it's a Sony poster I've had for years, and it's it's in I don't know maybe twelve colors. Every part is in a different color, and it's just music that's been colored, and it says across the top of it full color sound, hmm. and that's always been my goal. Well. Uh... 
Bobby, were you involved in like any significant experiences that you can recall with Lone Star? Like, I mean, like we had the Barcelona clarinet players uh, recently perform with us. Uh, uh, were you involved in that concert, or can you think of like any other experiences with Lone Star that really stuck out to you? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I was involved in the Barcelona uh, Clarinet Players Project, the concert at Meyerson, and the recording session. And truly, really, it really was one of my uh, uh, most memorable experiences getting to interact with those players. You always get a little excited to work with you know, uh, soloists, no matter kind of who they are, where they come from just all these different opportunities and the artistry that they bring. Do you share any of these experiences with your students uh, just so they can maybe kind of grasp on to like the same, uh, I guess like performing under pressure and becoming like or growing as a musician as you are? Oh, ab uh, absolutely. Uh, I feel like one of the things that uh, I like to do with my students is I feel like I can be relatable with them or try to share those experiences because a lot of them when it comes time for their like all-state auditions or the ones that maybe go into uh, college playing or if they have maybe a high profile performance whether it's you know a, a middle school UIL performance or an honor band performance or something like that all-state audition you know we've all been there and have had similar experiences you know um, and I think that's one of the things that you know can make at least from, from my perspective more relatable to a student that I'm not just maybe a clarinet expert but you know a human that's had to do the exact same things just on different levels every time I submit maybe a pre-screening recording for an audition that's exactly what they're doing right now during these mm -hmm. times of COVID sending in their all region recording oh, yeah. so I mean sharing sharing either my success with those or even a failure with those that you know it it just kind of brings it all kind of full circle with them and we had a great uh, turnouts with the North Texas Giving Day, uh, didn't we, Eugene, uh, just this past month? Yeah, yeah, great turnout with that. So thank you, everybody who donated and is support continues to support Lone Star uh, today. All right, well, thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.